Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me look to your neighbor and say, it's such an honor to sit beside you. Hallelujah. Are we grateful to the Lord for his mercies and his goodness? I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. For you alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. Yes, I will give you all my worship and I will give you all my praise for you alone I long to worship you alone our Can we just take a few seconds and thank the Lord for his mercies? Thank him for his faithfulness. Lord, we will never take your mercies for granted. It doesn't matter how many times we come before you, Lord. We will always take it to heart to give all the glory to your name. And O for you alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. God is indeed faithful. Even if we keep hearing the same testimony every single week, we will give him thanks like it, like it is the first time we're hearing it. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus for his faithfulness to the house of Koinonia? The Bible shows us that one of the ways that we can properly receive and accommodate the blessings of God is that we give all glory to him. I think it's Malachi 2 verse 2 that says, um, it shows how a blessing can be turned into a curse just because you did not give glory to God. Hallelujah. But we're a, grateful we're a grateful house. We're a grateful family. And we will always, always take it to heart to give all glory to God. Hallelujah. In the next few minutes, we're going to be hearing mind-blowing testimonies of, of God's faithfulness. You're going to hear how impossible situations were turned into testimonies. Some of you, you will hear people share experiences that you are currently facing and you actually may have thought that you were the only one who can relate. But as they share their testimonies, we create that atmosphere of faith that the same force behind every testimony you're about to hear tonight is made available and is ready to turn your situation around. If you believe that, can I hear a loud amen? amen? All right, so the following people will be sharing with us here physically. I'll call their names so that they can come out and share with us very boldly. Let's welcome Precious Solomon. Precious Solomon. Secondly, we have Timothy Ishaku. Timothy Ishaku. And finally, we have our own minister, Emmanuel Jimon. Hallelujah. So just pay attention to the testimonies I have before me. These are testimonies from around the world, in and, and, and outside of the country, Nigeria, of what God is doing in and through this ministry around the world. This is from Tochuku in Anambra State. Tochuku says, praise to Yahweh, my great healer. I want to thank God for his forever fresh miracle in my life. It was on February miracle service three Sundays ago, and it happened to be my first time streaming live on Koinonia's YouTube channel, Koinonia Global. 
Apostle Joshua Selman was ministering and he asked everyone to do what they could not do before. Following his instruction, I began bending and turning my waist and immediately my over two years of waist pain miraculously disappeared. Two years of waist pain following a prophetic instruction and the pain is gone completely. Can we celebrate Jesus? This is someone following online. Tochuku says, till today, the waist pain is gone forever. And now my waist is as flexible as that of a young baby. Glory to Jesus for his marvelous healing in my life. Can we join Tochuku and celebrate our God of healing? You may be following online. This testimony is an encouragement to you. Whatever it is that the devil has done in your body, as the word of God comes, healing comes to you in Jesus' name. The next testimony is from Stella in Lagos, Nigeria. Since 2021, Stella says, I had been lactating and was worried. I visited the hospital, ran a series of tests, and was told that my prolactin levels were high, leading to hormonal imbalance. The discharge changed to blood when I began taking the drugs I was placed on. Further scans revealed dilation in my nipple. Stella says, I battled with this until one of the miracle services held last year, which I live streamed. Apostle Joshua Selman gave a word of knowledge regarding a lady experiencing lactation issues where a substance other than breast milk was being produced, leading to other complications. He declared healing, and I immediately knew that was my word. Stella says, since that day, I have not experienced the issue. I went for a mammogram, and the results came out good. I return all glory and all honor to God. Can we join Stella and celebrate Jesus? This is another testimony of someone following a service online and receiving complete healing. Hallelujah. The next testimony is from Vanessa in the USA. Praise the Lord, Vanessa says, Dear people of God, last year I was desperately praying for the fruit of the womb after having one miscarriage in 2018. Since then, I have not been able to conceive again. In May 2022, fibroids were discovered in my uterus. I went through the first surgery the same month and for my post-operation visit in June. The doctor was shocked to see that the fibroids had grown back. She mentioned that this was her first time seeing fibroids grow back this much in just one month. I have been sending my prayer requests to every miracle service and I went back in August for a second surgery. After that, the doctor suggested waiting for a year before trying to conceive because the uterus was weak from all the surgeries I had. In October 2022, miracle service, Apostle Joshua Selman prayed for women looking for the fruit of the womb. I keyed in and prayed alone. God heard my prayers, hallelujah. I conceived in November and delivered a bouncing baby boy safely. <laughs> Glory be to God. Is someone celebrating the faithfulness of Jesus? Hallelujah. And whatever the case is, whatever it may be, even if it is surprising to the doctors, it is not a surprise to the Lord. And he's going to turn that situation around in Jesus' name. The next testimony is from Ade Tutu A. I returned to give God all the glory for making me whole. I was diagnosed with multiple fibroids in the year 2020, and my doctor advised that, that I take the fibroids out to enable me to get pregnant. And in November 2021, I had the surgery. Fast forward to 22nd November, my husband and I visited an IVF clinic. We were asked to undergo some tests before commencing treatment. On the day of the sonohysterogram, I was told that a single fibroid was found, although small in size, but the location was not good. This was a confirmation to the scan I did six months before then. 
My husband and I rejected the, the report, and during the November 2023 miracle service, Apostle Joshua Selman asked us to lay our hands where we needed healing. I placed my hands on my stomach. He also asked us to raise a point of contact, and I lifted a small bowl of water in front of our television. And after the service, my husband and I decided to take our bath with that water as an act of faith. After doing this, we prayed that everything that is not of God in our bodies should disappear in the name of Jesus. And we believed that we were healed. The next day, someone say the next day. I went for a scan. The devil tried to stop me from going, but I said no. When I got home and opened the result, I screamed because the result said no fibroids were seen. Is this how we celebrate the faithfulness of Jesus? No fibroids were seen. We waited till our next appointment at the IVF clinic and I presented my results to them. Furthermore, I asked them to do another scan for confirmation, which they did and again, no fibroids were seen. I return all glory to God. Come on, can we celebrate Jesus one more time? Fibroids disappearing just like that at the instance of the power of Jesus. The final testimony I have before me is from Gina K. I write to testify of God's goodness, Gina says. My friend and her sister have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and I have been connecting in prayers whenever Apostle Joshua Salman prayed for the fruit of the womb. To the glory of God, my friend's sister who waited for more than 11 years for a child has been blessed with a baby boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. In addition, Gina says, my friend who waited for six years to have a child is currently expecting. Can we celebrate Jesus? Gina says, thank you, Apostle Joshua Selman, for always teaching us to pray and for interceding on our behalf. Can we celebrate Jesus one more time? So many testimonies of babies. I believe that is a statement that whatever is hindering your fruitfulness, be it in terms of bearing a child physically or prophetically in your business or whatever it is, it is taken away in Jesus' name. And you are fruitful in Jesus' name. Let's receive those that will be sharing with us physically. Pay attention. You're welcome. Your name and what the Lord has done. Straight to the point. Good evening, Colonials. My name is, my name is Precious Solomon. I joined Kononia last year, last year, October. I have an issue with my brace is, is discharging and I went for several hospital. I was asked to treat, but due to the condition of the country, I don't have money to take the medicine or do anything. So I told the doctor that I'll go back to my God, the doctor of the doctors, I'll go back to him. So when I went back home, I take, I open a chapter of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. I read from 5 to 8 that said, I should not rely on myself. I should trust God in, with all my heart, not to rely on myself. I key onto the word. And the very interesting part is chapter 8 that said, the word of God is like medicine that can heal any wound easily. I key into that word. I begin to pray with it every day and night. And last month, a woman gave a testimony about the same issue just like my own, and I keen into it. I begin to pray and pray and pray, and just notice this week, few days ago, I noticed that no pain, no distress, nothing, nothing. I come to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Can we join our sister and celebrate Jesus? No more pain, no more breast discharge. Secondly, secondly, last two weeks, our daddy says something that if you go back to your working place, all your friends, all people that you know, do something to them that will make that person feel like, you understand, do something to that person. <laughs> 
do something to that person. So I went to my working place the next day. I did not do it. The second day, I did not do it. On Wednesday, I said, I have to do something to my workers here. We are about 20 something, but I do to 18 of the people. 18, I have to buy some things for them, share for the people. But before the week run out, God just double what I spend more than what He did. I come to give you all the glory and honor. May His name alone be glorified. Hallelujah. Can someone shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Please talk to your neighbor and say, Don't joke with prophetic instructions. Hallelujah. You're welcome, sir. Your name and what the Lord has done. Straight to the point. Good evening, Conoria. Yes. My name is Timothy Ishaku. I work in the restroom and I have a testimony to testify because I didn't even think it would happen to me. Um, as you see me standing like you people, I'm physically challenged. I work with artificial leg less than 11 years. I work with scrotches less than 21 years. So it's someone that last two weeks that uh, daddy was praying for here, daddy say, lie down and lay your complaint to God. God will take care of it. I lie down unto God. I cry. I say, God, I want my family to come back. Two, I need a house room. Three, I need money to buy artificial link. And as God will do it, just do it miracle way, in a miracle way. In that week, in that week, my wife called me that I should get ready, she will come back to me with, to continue with my family. Secondly, I'm working with a friend. We are just walking on the road. I saw someone just came and parked a car towards me. That he want to assist me. If he assists me, will I like it? I say yes. Then he said that okay, I should come to him. I went to him. He take my measurement. He does many things for me. And now he bought me an artificial link worth worthy 1.8 million. So I give God the glory. I did not pay him a damn cobble. A damn. Ten naira I did not give him. He just said he did it because of God. I should just go. I, I try. I try to ask him which church you are attending. He refused to tell me that he won't tell me the church. I should just go. So I give God the glory. That is why I come to return the glory to God. God is worthy. Thank you. Hallelujah. Someone celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. He was trusting God for his family to be returned to him. He has been trusting God for an artificial leg. And just by favor, God brought a destiny helper and he did not have to pay a dime. A leg worth 1.8 million naira, that's what he said, came to him. Can someone celebrate Jesus one more time? You're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yes. So on Thursday, on Thursday in the afternoon, I stepped out to, do, to check something in my car. It was quite unstable. So I told my wife that, please let me check something in the car. So I drove out. So I drove around town. I got somewhere. Then I decided to return back home. On returning back home, someone flagged me down to just help him to get forward. So... I looked at him, he was well-dressed. Okay, okay, let me just help him. On opening the door, he got in. When he locked the car, he saw that it was quite a nice car. And um, the inside is tinted. He put the car off immediately. On putting the car off, I said, ah, what did they occur? Ah, you asked for help to reach downwards and I'm helping you. He said, I should just calm down and respect him. Ah. I said, all right, no problem. So I was calm. I relaxed. I had not known what was happening. And in a matter of minutes, about three other guys that opened the door and entered the car. So when they entered the car, I looked at them. I said, what, what is this? I turned and I saw the very fierce, angry looking face. So the other one told them that they should drop me and um, I should come out from the driver's seat. So someone else went to drive and they led me to the back seat. I sat on the back seat and they drove off. I had not understood what was happening. 
It was while they were driving off and I began to get their language. I say, ah, over now then be this will walk us of iniquity. <laughs> so they drove, they drove, they were going. It was when they started driving my car in a very rough way. Panic attack struck. My heart beat had already gone, I think, in 150. It was beating hard and I was afraid I won't lie. But in that state of fear, I knew settled in me that I won't leave this, I won't leave this city. No matter what will happen, I won't get out of this city. So as my heart was still panicking, I told myself to calm down. I told myself to calm down. They kept discussing how, what they were going to do, the plans of the car and all that. I was still going. In that motion, and they were speaking their language in a very, very, with very high intonation that you cannot suspect what God did. Here comes the wisdom of the Lord. He spoke to me and said, someone here speaks my language. So I spoke my language out loudly. I said, where are you taking me to? Then the person in front turned and looked at me. He looked at me so downcasted, like, ah. He asked me, do you speak this language? Do you learn this language or this is your language? I said, it's my language. I brought out my ID card to prove to him, my middle name, that this is my language. It's me. So he looked and said, ah, Kai, Kai. He can't take my brother to where I'm going to. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See the wisdom of God at work. So he said he can't take his brother to where they are going to. Then the other guys behind they got angry and they got furious. Stop that thing, stop that thing. And he told them to keep quiet. I said, I can't take him. So when they were arguing, he now said that, but he cannot just leave me like that. I should give him something. That how much do I have there? And I said, I had 10,000 naira. He, he turned and looked at me with anger. He hissed and said, drive off, drive off. Ha. I said, oh, this thing is serious, oh. <laughs> so he asked me that, what is my profession? I said, pastor. I said, ah, so pastor, you go see today. Ha. So we kept driving, and I said, okay, how much do you want? He said, how much can I give? And I said, I'll give you 50,000 naira. He looked and said, I should add something. He said, 60,000 naira. Now we are driven out. <laughs> so he told the guy driving that drive to, to the nearest POS that we can see. So they took my ATM card for me. They drove to the nearest POS, and he took the ATM and told me to impute. He said, calm down. When you go out, don't act rash. Just follow, and everything will be fine. I said, all right, no problem. I imputed my password and uh, my PIN, sorry, and they took what they wanted. And they still got into the car and started driving off. The anger increased. The intensity was high. They were angry. They were battling. So he received a call that they've gotten someone else. So when they received the call that they've gotten someone else, and I said, okay, let them drive me back. So they drove me back into the town and took me back to Area 10. When they got to Area 10, they said that, all right, this is what they will do. They will get out, but when they get out, I shouldn't open the door. From the back seat, I should move into the front seat. I should go. At this time, my hands were still shaking, despite the wisdom of God that delivered me. <laughs> so when I got into the car, I held the steering. This was around 2, 8, 2 p.m. I mean, broad daylight. I held the steering, I drove off, I drove off, I drove to uh, go to opposite DOA and I'm packed and I began to sing, sing the message of the Lord. It's not by any kind of wisdom, it's not by any kind of spiritual intelligence, it is just the sure message of God that I have entered into the hands of this evil man and he spared my life, he took me out, spared my life, spared my car, that I will return to my wife who was expecting me to come back home. Praise the Lord. Koinonia, can we celebrate? The show mercies of the, come on, I believe the Lord deserves some, something greater. Can we truly shout to the Lord? The Bible says you will hear a voice telling you this is the way to go. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you for preserving us. Can we just thank the Lord together? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have not allowed the enemies to rejoice over us. Now, thanks be to God.